No event changed the face of London quite like the Great Fire. In a few days, the centuries-old city was reduced to ash. Almost nothing of the old city survives today, save for a handful of buildings. Two of them, Staple Inn and the old curiosity shop, are in Holborn, and that's where I am to look at how the fire altered the architecture of London. Before the fire, there wasn't really much by way of building regulations in London. Buildings were typically constructed from timber with thatched roofs. Overhanging upper storeys were common, as were overhanging eaves and signs. These factors turned the city into a tinderbox, making it all too easy for fire to take hold and to spread. After the fire, new regulations were brought in under the 1667 Rebuilding Act. Most obviously, houses were to be built in brick or stone, not timber. Thatch was completely out, slate or tiles only. Overhanging eaves were banned, which made eavesdropping a lot harder if you were into that sort of thing. Overhanging signs were banned too. Your sign had to be fixed to the wall. Wooden window frames were to be minimised. The shape of buildings changed. Every roof had to have a brick parapet around it. Every house had to have a thick party wall that could withstand fire long enough to enable the fire to be extinguished and neighbours evacuated. Buildings next to each other had to be the same height, giving the new city a uniform appearance. Not related to the houses themselves, but every house had to be within easy reach of water so that if the worst did happen, fires could be easily extinguished. Sir Christopher Wren, the mastermind behind the rebuilding of London, and now of course best known for St Paul's Cathedral, envisioned taking things even further. He wanted to completely reconstruct the city with wide streets in a grid pattern. But unfortunately for him, the displaced people had other ideas, and so London returned to its basically medieval street plan. Times have changed, and slowly the regulations have been relaxed. Central heating means that open fires are rare these days, for instance. Increased traffic has widened the streets. The city authorities were even confident enough by the end of the 20th century to let Shakespeare's globe be built with timber and thatch. But it's a testament to the new regulations that there has never in peacetime been a conflagration like the Great Fire, and consequently you can still see Wren's architectural legacy to this day.